Hey man, we got the cool magic dude, Eric Bedard. <laughs> Welcome. Morning. Great. Thanks to be here. Nice to be here, Dave. Welcome back to Ontario. Yes, it's wonderful uh, to be back in the hood, my old hometown, North Bay, Ontario. It's absolutely wonderful. So you were in Victoria, what, 25 years? 25 years, uh, August 1st, so. Wow. Exactly. And you huge, huge corporate and uh, cruise gigs. Yes, it was very, very uh, lucky for me as, um, as far as the magic career goes. I have happened to get in with David Foster Group in 2002. So then I became his go-to magician for many of his celebrity gigs. I got picked up in private jets and uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it was pretty bizarre, but it was great. I saw that promo video you showed me. That's, that's wild. Yes, it is, isn't it? It's hard to believe that... Uh, Who's in that uh, video? Uh, uh, let me see. You got David Foster. You got Brian McKnight, Patti LaBelle, Pamela Anderson, Sarah McLaughlin, Sinbad, Jay Leno, Oprah, Dr. Phil. There's a whole bunch of them. Oh, like you it. wowed all those people? <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, I was out in Victoria, and I saw your show on a boat in 1997. Oh, right. You remember that? Yeah, I do. I yeah. was. Uh, I worked four years on a fine dining paddle wheeler. Yeah. It was actually called the SS Beaver. Yeah, yeah. And historically, the SS Beaver is known as the ship that saved the West. Because when the United States was coming up and claiming land, and they already had Alaska, they wanted B.C., but the SS Beaver was commissioned by the Hudson's Bay Company and went along and put all these outposts all the way up the mainland and claimed British Columbia for Canada. Hmm. So otherwise, B.C. would have been part of uh, the United States of America. And that would have been just terrible. That might not have been so good, no. <laughs> so I, I was just on a, a cruise to Alaska out of, uh, in, in May. You've yes. been on that cruise? Yeah, I worked that uh, for... Two and a half months, one summer. Wow. Back and forth. That's crazy. It yeah. is. Yeah. And listen, I'm, I'm going to do something a little later, but I have a brand new deck of cards here, unopened, and I'm going to get you to uh, actually open those, mm -hmm. break the seal, and then while we're talking, you can just shuffle the cards and mix them up. Okay. I'm game. All right. I've seen your stuff. <laughs> I, know, I know what's happening here. Right on. I am breaking the seal. But there, one of the top reasons why I have you here is because you're going to headline a fundraiser for the hospice September 7th at the Davidi Club. Absolutely. Uh, Dave, as you know, you contacted me about a year ago to see when we could work this into our schedules. And last year and uh, early part of this year, I was traveling a lot with, with uh, corporate events. But now that uh, as of June 1st, we moved back to Peterborough, Ontario, but we're up here in North Bay a lot. And hospice is a cause that's close to my heart. We all have uh, either current or past family members that have um, been treated with hospice. And uh, yeah, and it's a chance, you know, for years I've had many of my family and friends, uh, there might be jokers on the bottom too, two jokers, take them off. Excellent. Now you can just start shuffling and playing okay. with the okay. cards. But many people have been asking me for years, when are you going to do a show in North Bay? And I've done a few small ones. We did Magic at the Moon, some good friends of mine. Mm -hmm. uh, Out in Mattawa? Yes, Lorne Mick and, yeah. and, and Beverly Bell, they own the moon. And uh, Jake Thomas and I have done mm -hmm. three or four shows out there. But that was for small crowds, small audiences. So this is uh, an opportunity for me to come back and share some of the magic that I did on cruise ships for years and that I do at a lot of corporate events for David Foster and all his celebrity friends uh, and uh, share some magic with all the people of North Bay and most importantly raise some money for a great cause. Well the uh, Serenity Hospice is uh, looking like they're going to be cutting a ribbon either in September or in October because they've been doing this uh, this work uh, to build it for quite a while so the timing's perfect. Oh wonderful. And uh, your, the part of your show is going to be Keeping the Magic Alive, a tribute to your dad, Ray Bedard. That's correct. Uh, who was a huge magician in more than just Canada. Right? Yes, and, yes. And uh, we're going to have a couple guys that he trained at part of the show? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things we're going to do at the show, I have my nephew, Dan Poeta. He's a policeman down in North York. Mm -hmm. and, uh, He's from North Bay, eh? Yes, yeah. yes, from North Bay. And Chris Farquhar. As many people will know, he stars in uh, Carter as the police chief. He's also appeared in Cardinal. Is he the police chief? He is, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, we are going to have the world's first ever held head-to-head -head dueling straight jacket escape. Wow. In 1957 at the corner of, 
Oh, I even forget what street it was. I think it was Fraser in Maine or, mm -hmm. or Ferguson in Maine, one of those two. Yeah. My dad became the seventh man in the world to ever escape from a regulation straitjacket on top of the Parker Solvay Appliance Building. I have posters at home, and maybe we'll post one with this. Oh, we uh, definitely will. Yeah. yeah. And uh, It's going to so be a future story in my new magazine where uh, my partner and I are going to launch. Oh, good. We'll get to that yeah, in yeah. just a second. Yeah. But the... Um, <clears throat> so Dan, my nephew, has carried on the family tradition. He's escaping, and he's actually, uh, these days, escaping from the st same regulation straitjacket that my father did in 1957 the exact same straight jacket. No way. And Chris Farquhar, who performs under uh, stage name The Magic of Christophe, he was trained by my dad. Matter of fact, both of those gentlemen have a magic table that was hand-built by my dad. Wow. And I have one as well. There's five or six of them in existence. Uh, so they're going to be going head-to-head, -head, escaping out of a straight jacket, a, uh, a contest of sorts to see who escapes first. So oh, wow, that's going to be pretty cool. It'll be great. It'll be, uh, and as well, um, during the uh, the dinner show, there's two options for the show. Mm -hmm. People can come, for, uh, I think the doors open at 7.30, the show's at 8 for the evening show, or people can come at 5 o'clock, and doors uh, will open at 5, and at 5.30 we'll have a meal, and during that meal there's going to be a private comedy magic show. And Dan will perform a routine, and Chris will perform a routine. My son Jesse may perform a routine as well. I will perform. And then those people who have come to the dinner and the uh, Comedy Magic Show will have VIP seating for the evening stage show. And we've even, at a tremendous expense, we've brought in all the way from, uh, I'm not sure if it's Bonfield or Corbeil, but... We brought in a stand-up comedian who's going to do a little bit of his favorite routines. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on the show right now. Ah, wonderful. <laughs> uh, people out there in... It's going to uh, be a great show. Yeah, it is going to be a great it's gonna show. It's going to sell out fast, too. Uh, uh, it's it's going to be huge. Uh, RFP Media, actually, is one of the sponsors. They're creating this video for us, and we're uh, going to put it live for, uh, with the Gateway Live. Oh, right? how wonderful. So we've got a lot of different groups that are going to help out and make this a big success. Yes. Um, yeah, we're excited. Uh, Dan what, what, and Chris and I and Jesse, we're all excited to perform together. We're excited to have you as the host and MC for the evening. Well, it's big for me because it's, uh, I met you 30 years ago. Wow. Yeah, yeah. With the, when I was with the North Bay Independence. That's so this right. is like uh, just a spinning of the universe coming back. It right? is, because we did some articles together in, in the Independent. Yeah. And then in the North Bay Nugget. Yeah, you, well, I, I had the pleasure of doing a feature on your dad's, one of your dad's last shows, right? That's correct. Where was that? At the uh, Pinewood? No. Zorbus. Zorbus, It was right. called Zorbus. I don't know if that place, probably not there anymore. Maybe no, it's it not is. there. It's no. a parking lot. Yeah. But we did, uh, back in those days. What I, year was that? That's a good question. Because I was at the Nugget, and I did the feature for uh, when Don Clark was doing the uh, Weekender. Um, so yeah, that must have been early 2000. When, when uh, did he pass away? My dad passed away in 2006. Okay, well, it was before that. <laughs> <laughs> With my dad, you never know. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it was, yes. And I had a show uh, called uh, Wacky Wednesdays yeah. that I took uh, actually around the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, did, we did a couple of them here in North Bay. And uh, the first one we did, that one that you covered at Zorba's, we put tickets out, and it sold out in an hour and 18 minutes. Wow. So we put a second show on for the next night. We ended up doing two shows that weekend, and then by popular demand, we came back the following year. But it was great. At that show, I had, uh, I had close-up during the meal, and uh, my cousin Barney, my nephew Dan, my son Jesse, myself, and my dad. So it was five family members, yes. and we had a guest magician there uh, at the time as well. I want to ask you about magic and yes. uh, um, how often do people uh, figure out your tricks? Very, very fortunate to say not too often anymore. Yeah. <laughs> After years of working, I mean, people have asked me where, you know, how do I put together magic tricks? And I always say it's the same thing as a musician. Initially, maybe 40 years ago, I started learning moves, which is like learning uh, basic notes mm -hmm. and chords on a guitar and then you buy back then uh, it was books and then VHS and then DVDs but you buy other magicians routines 
and you start to learn their tricks. So that's like learning uh, Country Road by John Denver. You learn something with a few basic chords and you learn that. After a number of years and learning a number of different songs and combinations and chords, you start to create your own songs. So many of the routines now that I create are my own invention. Mm -hmm. Uh, my stage show is about 90% original. Oh, okay. And I'm very fortunate now that uh, as of last year, uh, there's a company called Vortex Magic. It's very big uh, in North America. And they've been booking me to, they've released a couple of my products, my inventions to help you do magic. Mm -hmm. And then we are coming out next week with a two DVD set on some of my stage pieces that will be available for other magicians uh, internationally to buy and learn how to do. Oh, cool. And then in the fall, we're going to do a uh, close-up, sleight of hand, two DVD set, maybe three. I have a lot of those routines. So. Oh, right on. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Oh, wow. So uh, I, I thought people would be able to pick apart uh, tricks with the uh, higher technology for cameras and stuff like that, but it's No, not... I, uh, <clears throat> when I practice, and I, I made a set of these for my son and my... Uh, my nephew Dan, but uh, I have three mirrors. So there's a mirror here, and a mirror here, and a mirror here. Nowadays, I set up three cameras with phones, but right. for many years, I'd set up three mirrors, and I would practice doing something this way so I could look there and there. Then I would do it this way and watch that mirror, so if anyone's standing behind me, Oh, no kidding. And then this way to see that man. Right, right. Because sometimes when I work at corporate events, uh, especially with David, there's always an after party that goes into the wee hours. Mm -hmm. And I often end up with 30 or 40 people, people standing on chairs behind me and all around in a semicircle. So you have to be bulletproof. Hmm. <laughs> cool. Is this a good uh, sort of uh, transition into something you want to show sure. us today? So, I've uh, I shuffled the hell out of those things. Oh, good. <laughs> I think uh, if people have been looking. So it's important, as you know, these cards are in no particular order. You're the only one that's, yep. I mean, you opened the package, you shuffled them, mm -hmm. right? So uh, I'm going to go through the cards like this, and I want you just to reach out and just touch one. Okay. Okay, and you're not going to let me influence you in any way. You're just going to go out and just touch any one you want. That one. That, that one, one right that there. One. Now, if you want to, you can change your mind. No. It doesn't matter to me. That's You're fine. happy with that yeah. card. I'm not going to look at it. Can you see it there? Yeah. Yes? And we'll show the card around this way here. And I want you to take that card, and if you would, tear it in pieces. Can so, I look at it while I'm tearing it? Absolutely. Or, yeah. It's still the same card, right? Yep. You can show it again to the camera. I'll look away. And whatever card you're tearing... There's only one. There's no other card in the deck like that one. Yep. How so many pieces? As many as you want. Just tear it up. All right. And put the pieces in your pocket. Have you done that? Yes. Okay. In just a moment, I'm going to cause one card to appear under my hand. And you showed your card to the camera, right? Yeah. Was that your card? No. That wasn't your card? No. That sucks. <laughs> what a, I'll tell you what, though. I've never missed twice. I have never missed twice. We'll take the cards this way here. Once again, I'll go like this, get one card to appear under my hand. Was that your card, the two of spades? No. The interview's over, folks. Thanks yeah, for stopping it. by. Pack it up. <laughs> Wait a minute. You know what? Normally now, I would throw these cards away because mm -hmm. they're not worth anything. They're missing a card. But these cards have been shuffled by Dave Dale, <laughs> who worked at the Independent, the Nugget, for 18 years, is now launching a new paper, A Bit of the Bay. A Bit of the Bay magazine. A Bit of the Bay mag. Am I allowed to say that? It's yeah, why not? too late. I already yeah. did. Yeah. So I could probably sell these online. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to keep these, and I'll put an ad in the classified Nugget but unfortunately, it's missing one card. But I bet you I can still sell them for somewhere between 40 and 50 bucks. Hmm. Matter of fact, <laughs> I already put the ad online. No kidding. It's in today's nugget, and it's online. If you could open your phone and go to the Nugget Classifieds, 
Remember, you shuffle the cards. You could have touched any card. I don't know what card it was. Mm -hmm. But if you go to Nugget, I think it's nuggetclassifieds.ca, and look under for sale. I think it's under games and entertainment. <laughs> oh, man. Pull it up online as well, uh, if you would, Richard. Yeah, we're going to... I could do it on my phone, but I don't want anyone to think that I'm cheating. I think it's nugget.classified.ca. Nugget what does it say? Ryan, the tech. Come on in, Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's got this. Okay, so I'll give it to him. This is from Ryan's phone. Okay, so we got a phone here. We got the Nugget Classifieds right here today, 11.33 a.m. on July 2nd, I think it is, right? July 2nd? Yeah? Yes, it is. And it says, Pack Shuffled by Dave Dale, July 2nd, during an interview with Eric Bedard, Remagic of Hospice Evening, to be held on September 7th at the Vita Club. Missing the Seven of Diamonds. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and was that the card you tore up, Dave? Seven yeah, of diamonds. It's, it's, it's the card torn up in my pocket. I'll, uh, I, I'm pretty sure I have a uh... a corner of it. Yeah. So, anyways. So, if you want to phone you in, see folks, that it's actually online this as we're cards. speaking. And here's the the tear up of the seven of diamonds. Now remember, he shuffled the cards. He touched any card. That's seven of diamonds. This pack is only forty-two dollars and eighty-five cents, and the money goes forty-one dollars and forty-three cents to me, uh, or twenty-one <laughs> forty-three, twenty-one forty-two to Dave. <laughs> Thanks for playing along. Okay, did anybody see how he did that? Because <laughs> I didn't see it. Well, that's pretty cool, cool magic dude. Uh, well, thank you, Dave. Yeah, thank yeah. you. That's uh, right on. So, uh, uh so, back to the evening. <laughs> <laughs> the I figured I'd be able to see that. I didn't see that. <laughs> That's good. And I'm pretty sure if you rewind it and look at it as many times as you like. Well, I think the key is to figure out where I picked that card and how you made me pick it. I would never do it. I would never do anything <laughs> yeah, like that. Dave, Dave, never. <laughs> well, I can put that with the rest of my cards that have one missing. <laughs> Anyways, what were you going to say? I was going to say, back to the evening. The evening is going to feature some... Uh, some large, um, I don't want to say stage illusions because we're not bringing in great big boxes, mm -hmm. but it's going to feature some uh, routines that play well on a big stage that are based on sleight of hand. When I started traveling on the cruise ships, I didn't want to get into having 30 big boxes. Yeah. In, in the trade, we call those people, and I love them, there's many great people, we call them box pushers because when they show up to a show, they've got three crates of boxes. Uh, I was able to um, uh, combine everything to a carry-on case and still put on a show in front of six, seven, eight hundred people. Matter of fact, my first two DVD set that's coming out and being released to magicians worldwide is called Pack Small, Play Big. Mm. And I put on a full show uh, out of a carry-on bag. That was my way of going about life. Uh, I moved around so much. <laughs> I just kept one duffel bag by the door. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Uh, now, why do you think people love magic so much? What, what is it about magic? I think, especially nowadays with uh, America's Got Talent, and there's so many shows out there, and so many magicians um, are, being, uh, in the, are in the limelight, and people are starting to realize that magic is an art. It's a craft. I mean, you can go to a magic shop mm -hmm. in, in Toronto. You can go to Browser's Den of Magic. You can order a, a trick pack of cards online that will do some effects. But for people uh, that spend a majority of their life, and, and I still spend, I don't know, 20 hours a week playing, practicing, unless I'm working on something new then I spend hours and hours every day. I never leave home without coins, a deck of cards. Uh, on the way here this morning, we're staying out in Powassan. All the way in, uh, I was playing with cards, coins, but I, like these, I carry these wherever I go. It's just, uh, it's always handy to have them if you need them, you know. It's just, uh, it's a really good idea to carry coins with you all the time. So, uh, yeah, so I'm always playing with it. 
big hit with grandkids. I bet. <laughs> yeah. I bet. And nephews and nieces. Yeah. yeah. How old are you? I am 69. Wow. Now, I know you uh, have a pretty healthy lifestyle. Tell me about how you keep yourself so fit. Um, well, I'm a non-drinker, mostly vegetarian. Yeah. I uh, like to go to yoga, do a lot of meditation. I'm very fortunate. My brother is one of the top meditation teachers in North America. My brother, Jim Bedard, has four books out now. The first one went platinum in Canada and then was published in four different languages. No so, uh, And one of the main reasons I moved to Peterborough, because he's in Bethany, just outside of Peterborough, and I get to go on a lot of meditation retreats with him. We're doing a retreat next weekend. So for me, uh, meditating daily is kind of like taking a shower inside your mind. You know how when you lay down at night and your head's on the pillow and it's just going a mile a minute and sometimes you wish, oh God, I wish I could stop it. Well, with a meditation practice, it gives you the chance to just calm calm all of that down and just kind of chill out for a bit. Wow. So Even 30 years ago, you were into uh, martial arts, you had yes. a club, you, you taught that, and that's part and parcel of that whole thing, right? Yes, yes, I did Body martial arts. Yeah, I did martial arts for... I don't know, um, probably about 40 years, but there was a couple of interruptions in there, maybe. But I would think about 25 years steady. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just one of those people that when I get into something, it's usually all or nothing. Yeah. And I did the same with martial arts, and I ended up uh, getting a black belt in um, Yaido. I became the first person in Canada to do that. Uh, Toyamari Ubato Jitsu and my son Jesse worked out with me, my brother Jim. Him and I each ran clubs. His was in Toronto and then in Windsor. Mine was in North Bay yeah, and then yeah. moved down to Windsor with him. So uh, it was a good bond and it's a good way to stay fit and stay healthy, you know. Staying fit and healthy, how does that translate into your uh, your magic show? Because uh, obviously you, you feel at ease, uh, your vibes, are, your aura is really good. Mm -hmm. um, I guess you can walk into any crowd and feel secure. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I still get a little bit nervous before stage show, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not so much nervous as it is excitement. Right. Um, and I enjoy the stage shows very much. I'm doing less of them these days by choice. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy the close-up magic, doing uh, illusions right in people's hands. And um, that's what I do a lot of for, for, you know, David Foster, pardon me. I keep dropping names. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I, I enjoy doing a lot of those functions. And for those, I'm, I'm never nervous. And it's, um, it's not a show-off thing. It's not a, no. hey, look what I can do. It's more of a, hey, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Fun. Do you want to see something else that's cool? Yeah, I do. I'll show you something yeah. here. These are coins that I bought these are the this is the last year they made them out of real silver check those out and these are uh, 1966 Voyager coins wow and as I mentioned it's the last year they made them out of real silver you've almost worn them out yes yeah I've had, <laughs> I've had them for quite a while and they are Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> they're about sixty dollars each right now and I'll show you something here I used to do this effect where I would take the four coins this way and put them in this hand, mm -hmm. and they would jump from this hand to this hand, invisibly. Yeah, but let's do it for this camera right here so okay. I can see you. But people always said they're coming out of his sleeves. Yeah, yeah. So instead of having coins go from here and appearing over here, could I use your hand instead? Okay, perfect. And just hold your hand about right there. Now, this is coin number one, number, th number two, that's number three, Number four, right. watch the coins. Four coins, I have three, you have one. Now I only have three coins, right? There's no extra coins between the fingers, none hidden underneath the watch. Yeah. When this next coin goes, Dave, you won't see anything. You might feel something, but you'll definitely hear it when it lands in your hand. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> the third coin I call the ninja coin. When that one goes, you won't see it, you won't feel it and you won't hear it, not a sound, watch. And for this one, I'm gonna do it way over here. I'm just gonna cover like this, and it's already gone, it's in your hand. Look, look, that's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's Now the crazy. last one is the most difficult. We go one, two, three, 
four coins, no extra coins. With this hand, Dave, go like this with your forefinger and thumb. And in just a moment, here's what you're going to do. You pick up the top coin, close your hand so I can't get at the other three and turn it over. Put the top coin on the back of my hand. So close your hand, turn it over, put that on the back of my hand. On the count of three, I'm going to take the fourth coin, drive it right through your hand. Mm -hmm. There's going to be blood everywhere. But it's a great ending. No, I won't do that. Watch. I'll take this one, squeeze it, make it very small. It ends up in your hand. Take a look. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All right on. That's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So that is uh, wow. a couple thousand hours. Wow. Yeah. Three, or, three or four years in a closet by yourself with some coins. You could learn to do that, too. <laughs> well, thanks for coming, Eric. This hey, is you're be welcome, fantastic, Dave. Fantastic, man. Yes, fantastic. September seventh, the VD Club. Club. Ticket information will be available very soon. Mm -hmm. uh, Magic of Hospice on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You'll be posting it. I'll be posting it. It'll be all over the place. Magic of Hospice. We'll see you all September seventh. Deep breathing.